Frogs are in real trouble here in Australia and actually around the world. My name is Michael Valor and I'm a amphibian conservation specialist here at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary. Specialist role looking after the Kroombat Tinker Frog breeding program. So there's six species of tinker frog. Two of them are presumed extinct and one could already also be extinct as well. The pandemic for frogs started back in the 1980s with a pathogen called the chytrid fungus and it spread all around the world very, very rapidly. Now around about 3% of all amphibians are already extinct in that short period of time. And of course extinction is natural, but this elevated rate of extinction is very, very much unnatural. The Kroombat tinker frog is a critically endangered species, estimated to be between 200 and 300 individual animals left in the wild, and they're rapidly declining. The tiny little frogs actually only found at one national park. Now, Kroombat lies about 80 kilometres southwest of Gladstone, found at a higher altitude. So they're an alpine species, they're found in a very cold climate and they're quite cryptic as well. So there's still a lot that we're learning about the Kroombat tinker frog. No one's yet to actually see tadpoles or spawn out in the wild or nesting sites. So we're learning a lot about their reproduction at the moment. We collected our first Kroombat tinker frogs from the wild in 2018. and We started making pairs of frogs and we've had quite a bit of success in actually breeding them and rearing them. Just over 80 baby frogs and we have another 150 tadpoles. It's huge for the species and it's huge for amphibian conservation in Queensland. We're planning on releasing sub-adult to, to close to adult animals, so the males will be calling and they'll be a lot easier to follow up with surveys. We survey them by listening for them. So we've been working very closely with Queensland Parks and Wildlife Services who have been keeping an eye on the species for around about 20 years. We're getting some consultation from some very knowledgeable frog ecologists as well. A lot of the work that we're doing is contributing to a lot of other work that's happening on site at Kroombat Tops National Park. Chytrid fungus is in most places and a lot of the sites that Kroombat tinker frogs are found in putting up fences to exclude pest animals from moving into those zones can help keep also pristine sites that are already free of chytrid that we might be able to hold on for potential release sites in future. Pest management's really important in the national park as well as a lot of survey work, keeping an eye on the frogs and how they're doing, as well as keeping an eye on the successes that we hopefully will have with the animals that we release too. We've been lucky enough to receive some funding for a new facility a frog lab if you like, expand the breeding and then get them released back into the wild. It's great that we got the funding for the facility initially, but the expenses are well and truly ongoing and it is quite an expensive operation. Things like breeding enclosures, filters, racks, refrigeration units and ongoing servicing. Since we're expanding the animal collection, we're really going to be looking at needing to support more human resources as well. Once we do that, we'll be able to bring more Kroombat tinker frogs into captivity and just expand the project and really work on getting those numbers up and ready for release. Frogs are in real trouble here in Australia and actually around the world. It really is a major project and it is going to take some big dollars to keep the project going. This is the only program of its kind in, in Queensland. We've already lost four species of frog to extinction and that's likely to continue and potentially increase. But when you look at frogs as a whole, they're very significant animals. Frogs play a really important role in our ecosystem. Of course, they're a food source for lots of different animals. But when you think about what frogs eat, a big portion of their diet is made up of insects. And that includes insects like mosquitoes and ticks. Now, we all know that mosquitoes and ticks um, aren't great for humans, and we're starting to see some really nasty diseases. So having frogs around is really important for us humans in the fact that they're actually keeping uh, significant numbers of insects at bay. Humans have benefited in other ways from frogs in general. There's some amazing medical breakthroughs that we've learnt just from studying frogs and then synthesising the compounds that they produce. Frogs are considered to be bioindicators. They're very, very sensitive animals to the environment. They've got very permeable skin, so they transfer moisture, oxygen and minerals through their skin, which makes them very susceptible to different pathogens. We like to think of them as being a bioindicator, kind of as a, a miner's canary, being the alarm for us humans when catastrophes are about to hit and frogs are in real trouble. So we are seeing all the signs. We are starting to really see 
those signs come to fruition in terms of habitat loss and extremes in weather for us humans that is basically following on from what frogs are experiencing. Frogs might be very small, but they have a massive role on the planet, not only for the greater ecosystem, but for us humans as well. 